Hello everybody and welcome back to another Quick Dwarf Fortress tutorial. In this video we're going to be covering good and evil biomes in advanced world gen, and essentially generating good worlds, very magical worlds, and then evil worlds, uh, worlds with lots of zombies and necromancy, and then an absolute nightmare kerfuffle of the two, and then we'll see if we can embark on a dual biome. Let's dive in. So the first thing that you're going to do is click create new world, and then what you're going to do is click on detailed mode. And we're going to scroll down, and we have some things that we need to talk about uh, regarding what these settings mean. For all these test videos, I use the medium region, which is 129 by 129. And we're going to scroll more or less uh, two-thirds of the way down until we find these settings. Desired good square counts in small regions. Desired good counts square counts in medium regions. All the way up to desired evil count in large and small and medium subregions. Now... Subregions, let's talk about those first. So when you're scrolling around on the world map, a subregion is that zone that has a name. That is your region. There are small subregions, which are very small, that don't last for a super long period of time, that have some variance. And then there are medium, and there are large ones. Now, what this requires is it requires that it will not allow world gen to start unless that assigned number of that type of biome is accessible. So because good biomes and evil biomes can occupy any region, any different type of land, flatlands, mountains, deserts, you name it, this will not allow world gen to start until it is capable of placing that many tiles based on your world size. Of course, you can see your maximum and you can see your minimum being zero. Now, maybe you only want evil to show up in large regions, so you don't get a lot of evil biome popping up, but when you do, it's a huge block. Block, then you'd want to turn up in large subregions. Maybe you only want small subregions to be evil, but you want a lot of them and you want them scattered everywhere. Then you would turn up small subregions. Now, if you turn these numbers up too high, it's gonna lead to a large number of rejections. It will eventually get there in my experience, but sometimes it'll take a while after rejecting large numbers of worlds. Something else I'd like to also mention, when generating evil worlds specifically themed around evil biomes, maybe you would want to go into here and change the exact types of evils that you can have in that world. Changing the number of secret types will increase or decrease the likelihood of necromancy appearing. If you set this number to zero, you will have no necromancy. Might be interesting in a good themed world. And as far as the evil cloud types, which is the things that wash over the surface, perhaps you don't like those. You could set those to zero and increase the evil rain types. Perhaps you don't want evil rain and all you want is the evil clouds. Disturbance types are specifically for things like tombs and uh, stuff that you'd run into in adventure mode. So if you want to play a more evil world in adventure mode, you might want to turn that up. But that's only if you want to be running into things like mummies. And the last thing is the number of regional interaction types, which includes essentially just the evil rain and evil biomes. So if you want a higher likelihood of getting this type of disturbance, you can turn these numbers up. And then, of course, alongside of your necromancers, you also have your demonic experiments and your necromancer experiments, your lieutenants, your ghouls, and your summons. Although, this is all just up to you and your own personal flavor, so adjust this as you will. So now that we've covered all of the basics, let's get to generating. The first thing that we're going to do is try and generate a very good world. So in order to do that, I'm going to scroll up a little bit, and I'm going to go to secret types. I'm going to set that to zero. So we have no necromancy, okay? We're now going to scroll down a little bit, and we are going to go to the amount of good count in small subregions. I'm going to set this to 5,000. Then, when we go to medium, we're also going to set that to 5,000. And for large subregions, we're going to set that to 5,000. So a very good portion, roughly a third of the world in total, based on this number over here, should be occupied with good biomes. Now I'm going to set all of our evil biomes to zero. So this means that there will be no evil biomes, there will be no resurrecting biomes, there will be no undead, and there will be no necromancy in this world. This ideally should just be a paradise filled with fairies and unicorns. Let's see what it gives us. Now it's going to reject a number of times before it successfully generates the world parameters that we want. This is because it's trying to lay out that required amount. Wow, it rejected way less than I was expecting. So we did actually get generating pretty quickly here. We can scroll around and see that we have gotten largely our desired effect. Let's try turning the numbers up a little bit and see if we can get an even gooder -er world. 
So this time, same settings for the world size, we're going to set everything here to uh, 8,000 and see if it gives us the same effect, except with more good biomes. I'm also still going to disable secrets so that there is no necromancy. And we'll see what it gives us. And the windy dimension is generating. At a real quick glance after pausing world gen, it's given us this huge, mirthful, serene forest, as well as many good mountains. This is gonna be full of very, 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 very happy gnomes. Uh, specifically good gnomes, not dark gnomes, of course, because those are evil. This is also a relatively likely situation to find mermaids in the oceans, if that is something that you're looking for. Although keep in mind, if you're trying to find mermaids, they tend to be very deep and only in the joyous wilds oceans. So even this ocean isn't really good enough uh, to get us mermaids. Maybe on these shores right here, but uh, still unlikely. So now it's time to generate a normal world just like Earth. I mean, uh, an evil world, if you will. So the goal here is we're going to set all of our evil requirements to zero. So right away here, you can see I've set all of the good regions to zero. And we're going to set everything here to 8,000. So increasing the numbers on the evil biomes quite considerably. And then what I'm going to do is scroll up ever so slightly, and we're going to uh, set things to my fancy specifically. We are going to increase the number of secrets to 50. This should double the necromancy and increase the amount of evil tenfold. Keep in mind, doing this might make certain factions go extinct and may also make the world unplayable. Let's see how it plays out. Now, as far as I'm concerned, this one actually started really quickly, but didn't actually give me that much evil. I mean, yeah, okay, there's a humongous mountain range here that's all evil, and this entire desert is haunted, but there's huge patches that aren't. You know what? Honestly, I think that this world could do with more evil. Let's turn the numbers up and see what it gives us. So just like the last one, I set the secret types to 50. And if we scroll down here, we can see that I've set my evil region requirements up to 10,000 and my good region requirements to, well, we don't need those because we're evil. Now this one is rejecting a lot more. I'm all the way up to 54 rejections. Uh, upon testing while I was doing this initially, I did get one with about 500 re rejections before it started generating correctly. So we'll just give it a wait and see where we end up or if it even generates at all. So uh, I have bad news, after 800 rejections, I decided it was time to turn the numbers down a little bit. So from 10,000, I've set them down to 8,000, and let's see how this plays out. There we go, after 166 generations, it is actually generating. So this is creating us a very evil world. I'm gonna wait for it to hit about 150 years, we're gonna give it a pause and see what this apocalyptic nightmare hellhole looks like. All right, so here we are in year almost 120. Of course, you can see this rather large dwarven faction surrounded by humans down in the lowlands around the edges of the of the mountains. Goblins completely infesting this very sinister woodland. Uh, over here, we have a pretty haunted uh, temperate the kind of grassland area, and of course, some haunted forests down south. Um, I'm not seeing many elves, and some of you won't mind that. Plenty of terrifying, moist, tropical broadleaf forests, which is actually the home to stranglers, one of the rarest dwarven creatures, or creatures in Dwarf Fortress, although this area is kind of inaccessible from the rest of the world, and it doesn't appear that there are any dwarves here. Well, this isn't entirely optimal, but it did have our, our desired effect. At the very least, this area would be rather neat to settle in somewhere on one of these sinister glaciers. Do keep in mind, though, if you are deciding to embark on an evil map, remember that Sinister is the least evil, Haunted is the medium level, and uh, Terrifying is the equivalent of Untamed Wilds, being the hardest variant. Uh, I do like this Sinister Mountain, I'll bet you it's full of dark gnomes. But we do have one more goal for this year video, and I would like to try and generate a good and evil world with kind of a 50-50-ish mix. Let's see if we can pull that off. So once again, still occupying the medium region of 129 by 129. Now, because we're trying to split good and evil, I'm just going to leave necromancy at default. We're going to leave everything as is, except I'm just going to kind of turn these numbers up, okay? So what we're going to do is we are going to set it so that approximately 50% of the world is going to be evil, or and pro approximately 50% of the world is going to be good. So I'm going to set this first number to 2,000. We're going to set the medium to 3,500, and the large desired good to 3,500. Now, for the desired evil, we're just going to mirror those numbers. So we're going to start with 2,000 in small. In the medium regions, we're going to go with 3,500. And in the large regions, once again, we're going to go with 3,500. 
And that's pretty much our, our hope here, that we get a nice mix of good and evil biomes. A, a battle for the magics, if you will, between the grim dark horrors of the darkness and uh, unicorns prancing across an open plain. Now, I expected this to give me way more rejections than it did, but it does actually seem that it's ha like it's had my desired effect. We have these large evil mountain ranges surrounded by these very good plains. We're going to let it generate for a couple more years, and we're going to take a peek at this world. Now, the main reason why you would want to generate a world like this is so that you can get both desired effects. And that is kind of the goal for this world gen video, is to generate these kinds of interesting worlds. Let's get a couple real quick embarks, and uh, then we'll wrap up the video. So this is our mix of evil terror terrifying zone right next to this joyous wilds kind of region. And if we actually kind of scroll around here, we can see that there's also untamed wilds neighboring these terrifying zones and quite a few other neat spots. Those volcanoes that I mentioned, specifically this one, eh, well, it is positioned right next to serene and sinister. So I think the one that I, the area that I would like to see the most right here is this, this kind of terrifying uh, continent of shadow of the foolish tower, which is the mountain range right next to to the uh, murk of deserts, the uh, joyous wilds, temperate swamp. Let's take a peek at it and uh, see what it gives us. Let's just increase the size of this ever so slightly. So now the game is playing and not paused. And of course, this is our good biome. As you can see, we have these feathered tree trunks. And over here is our evil biome. Oh no. Oh no. Well, that's a little dark. It's raining vile slime. So very quickly, this half of the biome is going to become a very grim, gross, dark space. And this is going to be your beautiful, wondrous fantasy forest. Well, that's a, a grim reality that these dwarves have to face. Let's take a peek at the wildlife. And they're still floating around. Oof, this would be a challenging fort to survive in. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you, do, if you would like to see more videos like this, uh, check out the Advanced World Gen series I have on this YouTube channel. Of course, I have quick tutorials covering more basic topics in Door Fortress as well, and this fits into that series. If you would like the defaults for World Gen, there is a link to the wiki page on how to do that down in the description of this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I would like to see you in the next one.